Uh, take your Bibles, turn to Deuteronomy, chapter 15. I'm going to teach something. Deuteronomy chapter 15. Um, you pray for me this morning that my thoughts will be clear, my mind good and straight, my heart uh, in the right place. I am really, I, and I, didn't, I didn't think I woke up this way this morning. I feel good physically, um, but I, just, I think I just have a very, very heavy spirit on me this morning. And... Um, not sure what it's all about, don't know why, but you get those and then you've got, you know, thoughts that run through your head and I don't like it, so I prayed about it. And, um, but I, and I taught this in Sunday school, but it is part of, it's part of a thorn that I carry. Um, everybody has scars, amen? And you have stuff that you carry around that you ask you realize that nobody can take it away from you nobody can do it for you so you ask God to take it away and God is good and he won't take it away so what he'll do is he'll give grace instead and so um I couldn't ask you to pray about one specific thing for me because I have no idea why there's such a heaviness on my heart, but there is. And so I decided a long time ago to, if I ask you folks to be honest about yourself and about who you are, then that means I have to be the same way. And God has made it so that I'm not, you just ask anybody that's around me all the time, I'm not very good at pretending I'm in a good mood when I'm not. And so, um, if you all just pray for me this morning that God will give me grace. All right? Now, this that I'm going to talk about this morning, I've got a bunch of scripture, as I always do. I have this big fear that I'm never going to have enough scripture to fill out a whole sermon. So, I always just double up and triple up, but... I think this is something that we need to understand, something that we need to know. I mentioned this a little while ago before the, the last song we sang. We sang, He Set Me Free. And um, that song, really, it, when you realize the amount of debt that you're in or were in because of sin, when you recognize that, and then you understand that God has not just set you free, He's made you free, and that the debt is cleared. To recognize that, to have that, to have that thought, it should cause every one of us to get down on our face before God and thank Him every day for what He's done for us. Okay? So let's approach this with just a, uh, it's just going to be a teaching. I'm going to let the scriptures, I'm going to try to explain a few things, but I'm going to let the scriptures do the talking this morning. Deuteronomy 15, are you there? Say amen. Do you believe it? Say amen. Verse 1. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbor shall release it. You think about that. Because there's two ways that, I, that I, I'm going to have to say this. Number one, if you're the borrower, the law says that you can be made free. But don't abuse the law. Don't abuse the system. Amen? I'm going to talk about that. But the other part of this is, if you're the creditor, meaning that you loaned the money out to someone, I can tell you that one of the biggest reasons why 
relationships between people have a falling out is over money. Money that's loaned that isn't paid back. Okay? And, but God put it in the law that if money was loaned out at the end of seven years, no matter how much had been paid, that debt was cleared instantly. So you ponder this. There's a good lesson in all this. Every creditor that lendeth ought unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the Lord's release. You write that down. Who set you free? The Lord did. The Lord made you free. The Lord is the one who paid the debt and it is the Lord's release. I like that. Of a foreigner, thou mayest exact it again, but that which is thine with thy brother, thine hand shall release. Save when there shall be no poor among you. Now look at this. For the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance possess it. God had made promises to them that when they got to Canaan, that Canaan was so abundant with everything that they needed, there would be no poor people. I believe that when Christ comes to put his feet on this earth to rule over it for a thousand years, nobody will ever go to bed hungry ever again, for at least for a thousand years. That's what I believe. God is a God for poor people. And God is against those who would abuse them. He's against it. So, uh, and so that's why he said in verse 4, there's going to come a time, there's not going to be any poor people, and there's no poor people, then there's no debts to collect, and there's nobody to release because nobody had to borrow anything. Because God, I mean, my goodness, they came back carrying one cluster of grapes. Two men had to carry it. That's a lot of wine. That one cluster of grapes make a lot of wine. Somebody say amen. A lot of big raisins. Put that in your raisin bran. One raisin in a raisin bran bowl. So verse 5. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. So there's the, there's the catch there. If they were obedient to the word and to the law. For the Lord thy God blesseth thee as he promised thee. Thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. Uh, I probably won't look right at it, but I, I remember there's a place in Deuteronomy 28. Uh, if you wanted to turn there, maybe you, you might be able to find it quicker than I would. But... Um, God told them in Deuteronomy 28, this would be um, the blessing that he would bless them with. If you look in verse 11 of Deuteronomy 28, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open up unto thee his good treasure. The, he the heaven to give the rain into thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. There it is. But if you keep reading down Deuteronomy 28, if they didn't keep the law, watch, listen to this now, this will tell you where we are. If they did not honor God's law and keep his laws and his statutes, and then God said, I'm going to reverse that whole thing. Instead of you being blessed, now you're going to be cursed. You're going to be cursed in your city. Who wants to move to a city right now? No way, no how. No way, no how. Okay? Most cities in this nation are cursed. Okay? They're full of sin. They're full of wickedness. They're full of drugs, murders, everything else. Okay? Nobody, and, and so that this Bible's right. But he said to them... Instead of you lending out, you're going to be the borrower. Because you're going to have lack. You're going to be poor. I'm not going to bless you. 
And, and, you're going to, and there's going to be outside nations that are going to have debt against you. This is where we are in this country right now. I think it should scare us at how much debt the United States government is. They were talking this morning about Illinois. Illinois has a credit rating just barely above junk bond status. That's Illinois. You know why? They owe so much money and cannot pay their bills. 25% of the Illinois budget is supposed to go to pension funds. People that are no longer working that are receiving a pension from the state of Illinois, 25% of their budget goes to their pensions. Okay, And it's a debt. They keep having to borrow money and borrow money and borrow money. And because their credit rating is so poor, they have to borrow at a much higher interest rate. And what happens is the payments that they're making to pay off the debt are not even covering the debt. They're covering the interest only. And then they're borrowing more money and more money. I would, you guys moved out of Illinois, didn't you? Good job. Way to go. Because there's, you know what, I don't see any future in something like that. Amen? So I'm gonna, we're going to pray, but I'm going to talk about a lot of things related to debt. And some of it ought to shake us up a little bit. Because, ah, let's pray. You pray for me today, all right? Father, I ask your, for your grace. And God, before you and this company, I'm going to be very honest. And God, you know that there are devils just wanting to pull me right out of this pulpit. So Father, I need your help. I need your grace. Lord, I don't know what it's about. I don't know what's going on. But Father, I need your help. And I thank you for these people. I thank you, Lord, for those that you've given us online. Uh, they together, Lord, are what makes this church what it is. And Lord, I have really nothing, nothing to complain about. Because you've been very, very good to me and you've been very good to these people. And I'm very thankful for it. But Father, my heart is very heavy. And I don't know why. But Father, I'm going to trust you because I don't have anything else to lean on except you. So Father, give me grace today. And give these people grace today. Lord, there may be somebody, maybe in this very room, that is in far worse shape than I am. And they're covering it up, they're hiding it, but it's bad. And Father, my heart goes out to them. I pray, God, that you would help them. There may be somebody watching online. God, that they just feel like they're just steps away from just walking out. And I just pray, God, that you would help them and give them grace and help them, Father. Bless them. Give them comfort. Give them understanding. Remove the thorn. Or give them a greater grace than they've ever had. Father, teach us some good things out of your word today. This law, Lord, is right. This book is right. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just open up our eyes, dear God, to sometimes the mess that we get ourselves in, the mess that our country's in, the mess, Lord, that our churches are in. And people, Lord, have no understanding of the debt of sin that they owe. Father, open our eyes and help us to see and give us grace, Father. Help me to preach this, Lord. Direct me, Lord, as I go through my notes. Help me to say what I say, Lord, in love. Just ask your blessing today in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. Uh, turn to, I'm going to go back to Deuteronomy 15, so maybe put a little bookmark in there and hold that spot. Turn to... Uh, Turn to Matthew chapter 5 
And then 2 Kings 4. Matthew chapter 5, 2 Kings 4. Let's go in that direction. Again, I'm just primarily teaching more than anything, trying to get us to understand the reason for the atonement of Christ on the cross. As we sang in that song, He Set Me Free. The reason for Christ's crucifixion, the whole, one of the whole points about it was paying off the debt that we are under. Paying off the debt, we went out and wrote checks in our flesh that we could not vouch for. Just because, and most people know, I say most people know this. Just because you've got checks left over in your checkbook doesn't mean that they're all good. Believe it or not, there are people who don't think that way. They think as long as they've got checks left in the checkbook, as long as the credit card doesn't get rejected, then they can have whatever they want. Write checks, use the credit card, write some more checks, use the credit card. Okay, I learned a long time ago. Lisa and I have been married 32 years this year, this next year, 2019. Did I say 22 or 32? 32. 32 years. And I learned in the very early stages of our marriage that there's only one, between Lisa and I, there's only one who's smart enough to handle the finances, and it wasn't me. Not me. So I don't pay the bills. I don't write the checks. I don't do any of that. I leave that up to Sweetie Pie. She's a lot better at it. She was good at it when we didn't have any money. God still let us help us pay her bills. Okay? So... There's just a lot of things that I've learned about debt and debtors and creditors and how the Bible sees this. And I learned it about the sins that we commit are debts that we owe. And I want you to understand this. Matthew chapter 5, this is what they call the Beatitudes, and here's how it starts. Seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, look at verse 3 and underline this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now he's not, I don't believe he's talking about having, like being depressed. I don't think he's talking about that. I think it literally means what it says. They are poor in spirit, meaning they're bankrupt. Totally and absolutely bankrupt. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to give you an illustration of that. Let me get to it. Turn to Matthew 18. There's a parable here. And I want you to understand what debt is all about. Creditors. Uh, there's, in fact, there's verses now that come to my mind. I wish I had them in my notes. There's a, there's a one in the Proverbs that says that, and I'm going to paraphrase it, and I'm going to mess it up, but you're going to get the gist of it. Whoever you owe money to, that's your boss. The borrower is servant to the lender. I think that's how it says. The borrower is servant to the lender. Let me tell you how that works. In America, if you want a nice car, not with them nice hot rods, nice big old truck, and you go buy it, you don't really have the money for it, but you want it, so you go buy it. Because you figured, I'll make payments on it. So, you fill out the deal. They, because you don't look like you're a good money paybacker. They jack you up with a high interest rate. Because they figured, we're going to, at the first, we're going to try to get as much out of them as we can. So what happens is, you're riding around in this nice automobile and you think this is all great and it's all, boy, this good and I got by with it and everything else. But then all of a sudden, you're, they start cutting your work hours or something else comes up, water bill, heating bill, electric bill, 
insurance bill, doctor bills that you got to pay, and then all of a sudden you're not making payments on the truck or the car. This Bible's right. You are a servant to the man that you borrowed the money from. You're a servant to them. Because they have the right in this country that if you don't pay that, after working through the courts and after working through everything else, they get a judgment against you. They're going to come and take your car away from you. you. And you are servant to them. You lost your car. In 2008, 2009, they call it the housing bubble. It burst. And people were conned into by these banks, by these lending companies, and by Congress forcing banks to loan money on mortgages to people who couldn't afford it, giving them an adjustable rate, which is a danger. Adjustable rates are dangerous. Because if they start out at 2%, they can jump quickly to 14 15% in a month. And what happened is, all of a sudden now, people were being thrown out of their house. How, and they say, how can they do that? The news media is all there. I'm being thrown out of my house. This is not fair. I, this is my house. No, it ain't. You are a servant because you borrowed. You don't own it. The bank does. And until you pay it off, that's their house. And legally, they can take it away if they want. And they do. So then where does that put you? And we had people thrown out of their houses. And of course the news media making a big deal about it. But they're being thrown out everywhere. Because they did not realize what the Bible says. They had debts. They could not pay. Now you apply that to sin. Sin is a debt. And most people have this idea. That good deeds are payments against sin. And they're not. So look in your Bible. God just showed me something about this passage here, and I'm going to, I'm going to show it to you. The number here is right. You think Jesus just pulled this random number out of thin air? No, he's using it for a reason. Matthew 18, verse 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king. Watch this. The kingdom of heaven. God says this world and everything in it operates this way. Which would take account of his servants. Now I want you to ask this question. Who has the right to judge you? And while you think nobody has the right to judge me, God does. You are a servant of the most high God. And you are a steward and God will take account of you. All of us are going to appear before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to be dead honest with you this morning. I'm not looking forward to it. It would be like if we all had Crimes that we committed in the past that we thought we got away with and all of a sudden they come and arrest us. And they say, you're going to have to go stand before a judge and give an account of what you did. That ought to scare us. Verse 24, and when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him how many talents? 10,000 talents. 10 is always the number for what? The law. Ten Commandments. That's why that number's there. God just, I looked at this forever last night, and I didn't get that out of it until just now. It's the law. Which laws did you break? Probably all of them. In some form or fashion, you broke the law, and you owe ten. Now, I'm going to ask you a question How much is a talent? Does anybody know? I'm going to tell you in a minute. When he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. Look at this. The Bible says we are sold under sin. Because 
of our sins because we went writing checks in our flesh that we could not account for. We didn't have anything to back it up. God put us under cruel authority, put us under the servant of sin. We are the servants of the devil. Verse 26, the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And that Lord knew he was lying through his teeth. Because I'm going to show you, look up on the screen. This is from... The, when you have the Pure Bible Search software, you can look up in the bottom, there's a dictionary. And the word talent, I looked it up. The Hebrew talent of silver was equivalent to 3,000 shekels or 113 pounds, 10 ounces of silver. At today's price, one talent of silver is 28,051 ounces. The total debt that this man owed was $280,517,400 and some change. And he bowed down in front of the Lord and said, give me time, I'll pay it all back. And he was lying through his teeth. That's a lot of money. What will you earn... And as far as I know, I don't have any rich bazillionaires in this church. No lottery winners, nothing like that. In your lifetime, if you worked until you dropped dead, 85 years old, 90 years old, if you worked and you were a greeter at Walmart, making minimum wage, if you were a, you could not ever pay back $280 million. You might ask the question, how did he get in that much debt? It happens. But remember that number 10 is telling us this has everything to do with the law. Let me tell you what most people's problem is. Most people's problem is they think that they can do things against God's law and over time, God will get over it. That's what they think. Well, God, that was, that was 25 years ago I did that. Doesn't matter. It was a debt that so far... No one is paid. No one. Let me ask you a question. You people look like you have a little bit of common sense. You know a little bit about the world. Do debts just fly away and disappear? But some people live that way. There are some people, and in everything that I'm saying to you, I'm talking about, number one, real physical financial debts, And number two, I'm talking about sin. Or let me add another one. Um, Debts of offense that we do to others. You know what I'm talking about? You did something to somebody. You offended them. That's a debt. You know how I know? Because it has to be cleared or it's always going to be there. And I, I have known people in my life who always lived in such a way is that they didn't, it didn't bother them who they offended. It did not bother them whose feelings they hurt as long as they got their way. And then they moved on as if everybody around them just has to get over it and forget about it. I've known people like that. I've gone to church with people like that. That ain't right. Because whether it's an offense or a financial debt or sin, it doesn't just go away. Ever has to be accounted for. Somebody's got to call the debt. 
How much of this country does China own? Well, let me ask it this way. How much of this country is China about to call in? Way too much, Ron. We borrow money as a nation. We borrow money and we're borrowing it from China. You think that they're just going to say, listen, we want to get along with you Americans. We like you people. We like capitalists. So we're just going to get along and you know what? You don't have to pay that back. Don't worry about it. That is never going to happen. Especially when you borrow from your enemies. So whether it's debts of offense or financial debts or debts of sin, they don't go away. And what happens is we have one debt and we can't pay it. Uh, a guy told me, his, he, him and his wife got into it one time and he said, she made me so mad. What she would do is if we got a bill in for like $300 and there was $250 in the account, in her mind, we can't pay that bill. Then she would spend the $250. Since she couldn't pay the bill for $300, we only had $250, blow the $250 and forget about the bill. And he said that happened a lot and him and her had it out. Okay? We all have these stories, don't we? We know these stories about people or ourselves when it comes to debts. Debts of offense, financial debts, and debts of sin don't ever go away. And all we do is just keep adding more and more and more and more. So, verse 27 after the man fell on his face before the Lord and said, I'll pay thee all, the Lord realized that he couldn't. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave the debt. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen? And let me just go back to this. When you know that you've hurt somebody's feelings, does it bother you? It should. You should have a conscience and it should bother you. And it is a debt. And it, it ha you don't feel cleared until you've made this thing right with that person. Once it's cleared, it, everything should be fine. Right? Am I right? Forgive and... Because if a debt's been cleared, they don't owe it anymore. And I promise you, I'm not telling you anything that I have not had to deal with before, both as a borrower and a lender. The Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, loosed him, forgave him the debt. Look at verse 28. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pennies. One dollar. This man owed 280, what did I say, 280 million dollars. And he found one of his servants that owed him 100 pence is 100 pennies. That's one dollar. Or a hundred Kenya shillings, for those of you in Kenya. Okay, because it's about the same. So he owed him 100 pence and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, Pay me thou that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Now we'll stop right here. What's, what's so funny, Megan? I know you're not laughing, but... There were debtors' prisons. It was punishment. I'm not sure exactly how it worked, but it was punishment for someone causing the debt... Number two, I would assume that in some cases they put them into involuntary servitude. They made them work. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, if you... That's a good question. Now, let, me, let me deal with that. Thank you for bringing that up. 
Turn to uh, 2 Kings 4. This is the law. Okay, this is what God said was going to happen. What time y'all want to get out of here? Because it's up to me, I'd leave now. Don't say any time. Second Kings, oh, let, me, let me deal with this. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Bond servants. Okay? They were not just picked at random because of their race or because they were from a different family or whatever or the poor side of town. They were not just picked at random to be servants. They were bond servants. Meaning that the creditor, when the man died, the creditor came after the widow and said, I want my money. And she said, we don't have it. He had the legal right to take her two sons and put them into service to work and pay that debt off. To work it off. Meaning that they worked for free. They worked for no wages other than the wages. What does Romans 6.23 say? The wages of sin is death. Okay, that's because you owed it. What was it? Tennessee Ernie Ford said, I owed my soul to the company store. Right? So according to the law, Megan, a creditor could come take this lady's two sons, all that she had. And those two sons would have carried on the farm work that this man would have. But they're not able to do that because they got to go work for this guy on his farm. And under certain conditions, this man probably could have taken the land as well and said, I'll reap harvests off of this land until I get my debt paid back. Then they could be released. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so now back to Matthew. Verse 31, or verse uh, 30. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. And remember, the sins of your life are a debt. And they never, ever go away. You can pretend. You can act. You can fill your mind with that was a long time ago. I forgot about it. It's no big deal. It's water under the bridge. It's over and done with. Surely God's not going to hang me for something I did 25, 30, 40 years ago. Oh yeah, he will. You earned the debt. You earned the wages of sin. And that debt has to be paid. Period. Let it not be said that somebody who claims to be a born-again, Bible-believing Christian and who talks up their faith all the time in front of people and yet they owe financial debts that they have no intention of ever paying back. That's, that's wicked. That's wrong. Amen? There was a guy that I... When I was working with him, God gave me a soft heart towards him. I talked to him every day about the Lord. And it seemed like I, I, he was getting close to, to, to coming to salvation. And so I, I got him in church. Got him going to a church. It wasn't mine. It was another church down south because that's where he lived. Got him going to church. He joined, got baptized, him and his wife and everything like that. And so I, I was going to try to disciple him. I worked with him every day and I was teaching him what I knew about Christian life and things like that. And then he came to me. Wanting to borrow money. 
What he wanted to do was use a credit account that I had at a supply store to buy supplies for a job that he did. And then he said, when I get paid, I'll pay that off for you. And I said, okay. And then he didn't pay it off. And the bill came in. It was over $500. And what, he just went nuts with my credit at a supply store, buying stuff he did not need. $500, Ron. And I had to sell stuff that I had to pay it off because I didn't have the money. And I have not spoken a word to him in 20 years because of that. I have to forgive him. I have to forgive him. Or what? What happens if I don't forgive someone that owed me? That's what this, that's what this point is. Here this man was relieved of a $280 million debt. And then he went right out to a man that owed him a buck. A dollar. A quid. And didn't pay it back and put him in prison over it. So, verse 31. When his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told him, told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant that was your brother that was your kin that was your friend that was somebody you rubbed shoulders with you worked with every day you knew him even as I had pity on thee in verse 34 and his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the what tormentors you know what that is Hell. Hell is the place of torment. Delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Now think about, think about what you make in your living. Calculate that out. What do you make a year? And how long would it take for you to pay off a $280 million debt working the wages that you work right now. How many lifetimes would it take? This is why hell and the lake of fire are eternal. The torment is everlasting and eternal because the debt will never be paid ever so verse 35 so likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses there's certain parts of the bible i don't like and that's one of them. I say my flesh doesn't like it. Because my flesh wants to hold grudges. My flesh wants to take people that have either offended me or borrowed from me and didn't pay back and be mean to them and not be nice to them for the rest of their life. That's what my flesh wants to do. And I feel like I'm justified in it. After all, they offended me. It's their wrong this time. Or they borrowed it and didn't pay it back. And the Bible says they're wicked for doing that. See? They're wicked. And what I've done is I have forgotten about the people that I offended. The people that I hurt. The sins that I committed that to this day I wish I could crawl back in a time machine and stop myself from doing them. I wish I could. 
but I can't. I have been forgiven of all that debt and do not deserve that. Neither do the people that need my forgiveness. They don't deserve it either. But as I have been given it, according to this, I must also give the same to them. What is in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, look, read, this, read this with me out loud on the screen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do you know there's 66 words there? You just said them. 66 words, 66 books in the Bible, Ron. You get that? The whole, the whole of the Bible is about us being forgiven and us forgiving others. It's a whole point. Because who you won't forgive, you're actually a servant to them. Because you avoid them every time you see them. Or you won't talk to them. And you don't want anything to do with them. You're, and you live in constant fear that you're going to be confronted with them again. Because you won't forgive them. Or turn it around. You owe a debt to someone and you're constantly hiding from them. Or you offended them and you know it and you're constantly running. You're constantly staying away from them because you owe them and your conscience is bothering you. And you, don't, and you want to think that at some point it'll go away. And debt never does. Statute of limitations on different crimes, but to my knowledge, debt stays until they either write it off, forgive it, or it's paid. And you think about all this. There's a lot more in this Bible when it comes to debt, paying it back, what your responsibilities are as creditor, what your responsibilities are as debtor. There's a lot in this Bible about that. Maybe next Sunday I'll talk about it some more. But we got a lot to learn in order to be right with God. I want you to bow your head. And we'll bow mine. I'm going to ask that you pray for me. That whatever spirit this is, it goes away. Because I don't like it. And there are people out there that you have offended. That that debt needs to be cleared. There are people out there that offended you. And that debt also needs to be cleared. Because you also are a debtor. And you'll never be able to pay it off what you've done. Christ did that for you. His death on the cross was a ransom. It was Him paying the debt for you that you couldn't pay yourself. And He's worth all the praise that we'll give Him for eternity for that. Father in heaven, I come to you today and I thank you, God, 
for forgiving my debts, for paying off with the life of your Son, my ransom. I want to say, God, that I owe you all of my life for eternity, but God, I know that that debt was paid in full for free. And because just because you paid it, I don't owe you now for it. I understand that. But Father, for what you've done for me, I could never in eternity praise you enough for what you've done for me. Never. Father, I pray, dear God, that you would just open up our hearts. Number one, to those that we owe, help us, dear God, to either seek payment or forgiveness. And to Father, to you, our debts are all cleared by Jesus. And Father, we cannot serve you enough to thank you for what you've done for us. So Father, help us, Lord, as you deal with us, help us, dear God, as we deal with others. That we deal with them, Lord, out of forgiveness, out of mercy. And Father, there are things in this life that make us far richer than money. There's the love and the relationship of brethren and a kindred spirit among friends. Those things make us rich far more than money ever would. I would rather, Father, have good friends and good family than all the money in the world. So, Father, thank you, Lord, for making us rich. Help us, dear God, to forgive others. Teach us, Lord, your word and your ways. And remind us, God, that our debts never just disappear. Somebody has to pay the price. Open our eyes, open our hearts, dear God, help us, dear God. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name and all of God's people said.